beautiful. How are you doing today? Look, I have straight hair for people that want the hair update. Just saying, I have, <laughs> it's inordinately straight because I discovered that they make these things called flat irons. Flat irons, yep. And one of I my- was- Go ahead. Patrons. One of my patrons like made fun of me because I really didn't know what that was. I'm like, I've never had a reason to, but in fairness, her mother is like a cosmetologist person who's had right. her own studio or shop for years. And so like, right. and I know it's, I mean, I guess I knew it was a thing, but I've never seen one. I've never used one. I've never had an occasion to look for one. Well, I was going to suggest that, but I figured I started with hair dryer, and you said you had one. So that's why I suggested the hair dryer and the yeah, comb. Yeah. And that just kind of, I mean, sort of helped, but not really. Yeah. So then when I had, and I think the last time we talked was when I was about to have my appointment with my hair person for like, what can we do about this? So it was a little too soon to do any kind of chemical relaxing, whatever, which is fine. Cause I don't want to damage my hair. It's already like, yeah. But then my hair person said, well, here, let's try this. And of course she's got all the plug, all of her tools like plugged in, ready to go. Right. Cause she's a hair person. Right. So she drags out the thing with the flat ceramic plates plates uh uh-huh which i'm like okay (laughs) and she does it and it's like shazam it's gone and fixed magic i'm like where do i get one of those (laughs) and you know it's a tiny town like the nearest town to me is 70 miles that has like a target or any kind of a big box store like that Uh however however i will say the tiny little dollar store in our town had one perfect 20 bucks perfect so what do you think it's going to be a couple months to grow, to grow out the perm? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. And I was That's supposed okay. to go get my sides, you know, buzz, like I usually do every uh-huh. weeks, but we've had this snowstorm and my gal texted me this morning and she goes, I'm guessing you're not making it. <laughs> no, there is a thigh deep drift in my driveway. Even my uh, big Ford F-250 four wheel drive diesel truck is not going anywhere today. Yeah. Yeah. No. We are getting, I told you, I was telling you before, we're getting snow right now, but it's not going to nearly amount to as much, hopefully. Well, and we always get more right here localized Yeah. than there would be in town necessarily. It's just the way the right. land is and the way the snow blows. And we've had quite a bit of wind as well. And if people are in this area, they know what a snow fence does. Like, I don't think they have snow fences in. We have, we have them. It keeps it from all blowing, drifting yeah. into the road. Yeah. Right. So they set up the snow fence and then here comes mm-hmm. the snow in it and the fence make the wind goes like this and it dumps right the snow right, right. there. Well, we have a kind of a natural snow fence because there's a group of trees across the road and that kind of causes that to happen like okay. right. There. Yeah. So even if I can get out of the driveway, I might be fine. But there's other stuff going on like, you know, farm stuff and babies being born and things happening and like it's not a priority. I don't need to go to town that bad. Not a priority. Yeah. And I'm going to brave the interstate in this mess anyway. So we've yeah. had about 10 inches overnight and more to come today. Yeah. If Baby you don't food. have to go out and stuff like this, no. do not go out and stuff like this. Yeah, for sure. Well, if people want to follow baby goats, head on, head over to my Instagram for the farm is also tied to my farm Facebook. Cause that's a handy thing where you can post once in it. Right. And that's at Celtic Prairie Farm. So you can make it say that right here. I will. (laughs) Anyway, so we won't take up a bunch of knitting podcasts talking about farm stuff. But if people are interested, go watch my stories and stuff over there because there's been some drama lately. Some drama, some interesting birthing. Go see it. (laughs) Well, not that. I mean, it's not like I filmed my midwifery. (laughs) I was a little stressed out. Anyhow, people can look over there, but we're moving right along. You're like, look at what you're wearing. You're so speedy. You're on cowl number two. I'm done. Yeah. I actually uh, finished this one up because I couldn't stop working on it. So the orange one is done. Yes. Stripe. Everything's flipped on the camera. So I'm trying to, you know, stripes are fun and stripes are a little addicting don't you think you're like ooh, yeah, new color. Like one more. but i did cast on another one on march 1st when we started all of this and this is where i am so far Woo! so i went ahead and did the blue and red and pink and whatever one and it's this is lovely. where i am so i'm i'm past the halfway point in the lace and i'm actually really digging this one too now 
So I might do another. And um, some people sent me a tip on how I could have been doing this in the round. Yeah, I want to hear about that. That I want to share with people. Okay, so I heard about this um, from a lady on Instagram. Her username is Melanie underscore Rudy underscore art. And her and her friend, Quilt Cat, Cat Part with a K, they came up with this. So what you do is you you do your cast on, you join to work in the round. Okay. As you normally would. As you normally would. But and, this is starter stitch. So right. So if you keep knitting in the round, you're gonna end up with stock and net. So that's why Jana and I, we were trying to figure out how could we do this in the round before we started. We couldn't come up with something, but they well, did. I didn't try that hard, but yeah, well, we you know, we brainstormed for a little bit to see what we could come up with, and we couldn't come up with it. So what they did is you knit to the end of row marker, uh -huh. flip your marker, and then do either a wrap and turn or a German short row, flip your work and knit back the other way. When you get to that, your, so then your last stitch in that round is the one that you need to knit together as your, your wrap and turn or your German short yeah, row. You, yeah, you pick up the wrap. And, right. Uh-huh. Right. And, and the way they're doing it is you only do that on one side. So at that point you would turn and go back and then do the wrap or the German short row on the other side. And then like, just keep going so back going and forth like, like this. Like yeah, exactly. As you work in the round. And I was like, that is so genius. Boing. And at the same time, I was working on uh, Marin Melancore's Butterfly Cowl. It just came off the needles this morning. That's lovely. I'm very excited about it. So you start it here and you're like knitting this way out. And eventually you join it up in the back. And she does the same thing. Only with hers, you do it both ways. So you get around, you do your wrap and turn and turn and come back. Do that two stitch on the last one and then do the next wrap and turn. So she does it both ways. The problem with that is that if you do it both ways, it would interfere with the lace section. Yes. So yes. that's yes. why um, Melanie and her, and her friend were like, just do it in one direction and it still works. So I might just cast on a third one so that I can play with this because I think if I can do it in the round like that, uh, it would just even be a little bit zippier even. Yeah. Oh. I wonder what I wonder. I have what, to see here's anyways. my question. Ha, I need to go and look at her account, the gal you're referred to. Can what does the seam look like? I mean, can you see all those? Well, I can up? show you on this one. This is the seam is right here. Okay. So it's pretty much invisible. Yeah, and there's not like a big eh, like an offset jog kind of a thing. Nope. Wow. It just totally worked. So if has Melanie and her friend, do they have written instructions for how they did this? Nope. She just sent me the explanation and I was like, can I tell everyone? And she huh. said, yes. So will I'm you, telling everyone. Will you forward that to me in written form? So then I can put that in the video description down below. Yeah, sure. Yay. Yeah, because she sent it to me Yay. as an Instagram message. So I'll, oh, shout out to I'll put her information. So yeah, please go, do. Everybody can go say thank you. Thank you, Melanie Rudy Art. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That would be great. Yeah. That's Genius. Great. I love this. Is why I love knit alongs is because people oh. figure little things out like this, and yeah. you we end up becoming better knitters together. And people it's are great. really generous about sharing. You know what? How they did things and yeah. You know, yeah. You are further along than I have, obviously, because you're on number two. <laughs> but you and know, my cast on didn't have to be as long because you had to do with your other kind with your merino. Yeah. And I'm not dealing with birthing goats. So I think that you are well, okay. you are where you need to be, Jana. You're fine. Thank you. I think I'm showing you the wrong side here. There. It's pretty. Oh, it is pretty. I like. I love. I really like that. 
I might do, I might do some sock yarn for a third one. Why not? Yeah. Why not? Well, I have so much of it. Let's use it up. That's fun. Yes. That's really, really pretty. Well done. Thank you. And I'm on, yeah, I can't really do lace. I can't, I mean, I can, but I don't want to be counting while we're talking. So yeah. Yeah. I'm also at a having to do lace part, so I'm not knitting this time. Yes. So I, these would be a great gift though. I mean, I am scheming. I have considered doing another one because I think it would be a good gift. Yeah. I mean, look at yours is fantastic and it's easy. It does. It's not like giving somebody a shawl where they have to figure out like how to wear it. (laughs) I will say, um, styling this, right. My first impulse, put it on, give it a twist, put it over my head. Yeah. What I was finding was that that was making the wrong side. So I was getting right side, wrong side Okay. in the, in the bunch. Yeah. So you got to twist it twice. Oh, when you twist it, twist it twice and put it over your head. We have right side. That puts the right side out again. So that's my little tip. Yes. For that <laughs> so yeah I, I thank you because I struggle with any sort of style hey but I do have a pretty stylish gnome from my show from my this was my February gnome so cute they're so cute I've been loving seeing everybody's gnomes on the year of gnomes they're fun this is yeah. a, a year of gnome knit along hosted by imagined landscapes Sarah Shira, fantastic patterns. This was my teeny one. This was my teeny one for January. Oh my gosh, she's so little. Those are adorable. I love it. Um, so, so are yeah. she is she releasing those just as patterns or are they kits that you get? No, from they're her? out already. All the patterns have been out. Oh, okay. I thought it was like a monthly thing through the year that she was doing. No, no, no. See what the deal was, was she had, she's like, Oh, I've published already 12 gnome patterns. That sounds like it needs to be the year of gnomes. Got it. Okay. So There's one, there's one, I think that's free. And I think that was, this was the first one I did. And it. So cute. And it's just sock yarn scraps. Yeah. And so these are filled uh, she suggests like, you know, you have the poly foamy fill stuff. And then I guess there's some kind of like pellety things you can buy. To yeah, put- you can put on the bottom for weight. Yeah. Okay, well, they just, those are just at like Joanne's or Michael's or. Right. I don't have anything like, like that. Them. Yeah. So I use like wool, like fleece. Yeah. Clean. Except I did find a half a bag of poly f- fluffy business. But then I didn't have any, well, like in this one, I didn't have any of those pellet things. So I just went out the driveway and found some smooth rocks and like washed them and then put them in there. there. That works just as well. And this one I found, I used a golf ball. Perfect. And I mean, my husband's not going to miss it. He's got golf balls and it was pink. It's a lady's ball that we found in the bushes. Right. So I used a golf ball and then my daughter, see, I, then I took a piece of cardboard and she said, well, it's what's the diameter? I'm like, it's two inches. And then she took her compass thingy and, you know, did the, and then I put, put the stuffing stuff, the golf ball, the cardboard, and then it knitted it shut because I wanted it to be flat, flat. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think she tells, I don't think in the tutorial from Sarah, she doesn't says anything about cardboard, but I just like to do that. No, that's smart to get that. Cause otherwise there's just sort of tippy. You're having to like mash them when you put them down. So they'll well, and this one though is round on the bottom and it's not flat. And I did because uh-huh. it's meant to be like an ornament. Uh, I see. Yeah. Or That's cute. I, you could dangle that in your car. <laughs> I could. I don't Gnome know. window. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Okay. So that makes me happy. That's one of the monthly things I'm doing is the knit along with Sarah. Yeah. And she has all that information. If people are interested, I'll put a link down below about the year of gnomes. All that information is on her website yes. and she has a Ravelry group. It's, it's a bunch of fun. The gnoming all year is it's fun. That's wonderful. Yay. Yay. So cool. So we're going to, people can watch our Instagrams for progress photos and look at you. We'll see what you're going to decide for cowl number three. Cowl three. 
I mean, one perk of doing it with sock yarn is it tends to be super wash for whatever reason, either because it's treated or it has some nylon in it. And so that would make it perfect for a gift one. And then I could keep these two nice Uradale Shetland wool ones for myself. For yourself. I'm just Woo. saying. Well, why not? I was planning on giving them both away, but now that I'm knitting the second one, I'm kind of like, you know, with my other winter coat. That's cool. <laughs> and you know what? That Was it the red coat that you bought when you were in... London. Yeah, this is more pink. It looks very red on the screen, but okay. this is pinker than than the red coat. Yeah, but would you it not might work? Would you not work. wear it though, even so? I would wear this with my navy one. And then I have like a I want to wear this one with my jean jacket. Kid of the 80s, gotta have a jean jacket, right? I thought that would look cute. Cool. So that I'm gonna have one for every coat by the time I'm done. <laughs> And then what's coming up for you next? Um, well, I am coming up on the end of season five of the podcast. Yeah. So I, the next episode is going to be me talking about stuff, getting people caught up with what I've been doing. And then I'm going to have one more on cotton okay. that I'm putting together. So this last season, every third episode has been a different fiber. Right. And what? Right what we can do with the different fibers and what their benefits and downfalls are. So I'm going to do cotton and then I'm going to Iceland for 10 days with my cool. husband. Uh, it's literally cool. We found out after we started planning it, that like not much is open yet. Cause it really is still winter there. <laughs> it's still so, winter most, pl well, I guess. Okay. It's still yeah. winter here. Yeah. So beginning of April in Iceland, they're still, that's really the edge time for them. Yeah. So, but we wanted to, we're, that was as soon as we could go, my husband really wants to try and see the Northern lights. And so it was like with everything else we had to do, right. that's as soon as we could go and we might not see them, mm -hmm. but we're going to try and we're going to have a good time anyway. So, um, I do have two interviews lined up while I'm there, one with sure. a mill owner and one with a goat farmer who oh brought God. the Icelandic goats back from extinction basically you're um, interviewing they, them I know about I mean I've heard of them <gasps> I'm gonna go their farm isn't open I contacted them and they were like yeah come on by I'm happy to do an interview so I'm gonna get to go oh we're gonna spend gosh. time on the farm and sit down and talk with them about how they brought the the animals back it was like under it was single digit numbers of these goats left and they were able they have like 700 now in the world and it's continuing to grow so. to take pictures and i know that they've been it's been really really difficult to import semen for artificial insemination it's been super difficult to do that into north america from iceland yeah. it's been yeah. so difficult and people that have us oh my gosh I would I know, I'm very excited. I was so excited. Why are you excited? I didn't realize you were going to, I can't think of their names, but I didn't realize. Yeah, I can't too. And I don't want to get it wrong. Yeah, I know. Thing, so people can Google. You can go. I'll say, I can send you the names when we're done and you can stick it in the. I'm excited. I hope you take a ton of pictures. If they let you on the farm, that's, oh, I'll be glued to your Instagram for sure. <laughs> so very excited about those. So when I come back for my next season, that season has to be split into two five episode chunks because I, I do have the tours to Shetland in between, but I'm hoping that first chunk of five is just going to be interviews. That's my goal is to have five interviews. So I'll have the two from Iceland and I'll work out another three. So wow. hoping for an interview series. So that's like what's coming up for me. Also, Wait, well, let me pause you for a second. When does your next season begin then? So that will be in i'm like months months are fun okay. so that's in uh june okay come back okay. in june so june we can watch July, and then we'll break. be on the radar for the icelandic goat people in sometime in early june. summer okay that'll come in june another thing i'm gonna i'm gonna reveal here i'm revealing here it i may have revealed it on the podcast before now but i will this is the first time I'm saying it, whether it gets out in what, what, whatever order is different. Okay. okay. I am putting together a 31 day Shetland wool advent style box for this year. It will be a hog themed box, which is the Scottish new year tradition 
So it'll be 31 days. It includes seven yarn producers from Shetland. Huh? I have seven designers who are designing projects with the yarns involved. Oh my There'll goodness. Some gifts involved. So pre-orders for that should begin in early May. Ooh. So again, be watching my Instagram, I thought I knew how, or uh, go over to I thought I knew how.com and get on the mailing list. Oh yeah, so absolutely get on the mailing list. If you're not already on the mailing list, what is keeping you? I don't send very many. So when you get oh, something you don't. from me, and when, you know when it's I important. See it, I'm like, ooh, something's ha- happening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so those are like my big things coming up and the thing. But we'll be checking in one more time before we're done with this too. So oh, yeah. knit along still going on. We got we got knitting to do, folks. Let's knit. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah, you have a lot of traveling going on. Yeah. Yep. I have I'm a little scared to say I'm a little resentful of your traveling because I wanted to make you come do a couple things with me and you're like oh no I'm gonna be in I know it all conflicts and I'm like oh it all like it all like perfectly conflict ex- conflicted except for this one thing you wanted to do and I was like I literally can't because it's during a very brief period when I'm home and your family would like kill they would kill home. me yeah oh, and I'm sure so that someone would be sent to take me out as well yeah <laughs> where I'm going to be now. See, this is how my year goes is winter. I'm like home for three months. And then the rest of the year, it's like every month I have a trip somewhere. And that's how I have Iceland. I have uh, Shetland. Yep. I have Denver. I have New York city. And then I have Shetland again, oh, again. <laughs> that will be long enough that it will rain it will go from August into October and then probably November I'm guessing at that point we'll probably go visit family and then I'll have December January February where I'm home but we'll see you again because I want to schedule a time where you can talk about more about the box oh yeah i'm really excited to do yeah. that when we could have know, a podcast the where, where are you open. talk about the box with me and then we put that yeah, on my sure. channel as well as your channel and just help promote the whole thing yeah, yeah absolutely yeah cool. i definitely want to do yeah. that yeah give yeah. people a little more details i just got everyone committed now so i'm like oh i'm excited i can start like promoting it promoting yeah. it a little bit and letting people know so i don't have the prices worked out yet i don't have you know all of it's that okay. but i do have everyone committed and it's happening so i'm very excited yeah so we'll probably talk some more about that in may when you're ready to yeah. take pre-orders yeah absolutely we could we could get back together about that then wow. and then we can do our advent series again or our our yarn box series again in december and i'll be oh i would love that have my that own <laughs> That would be so fun. We'll just plan yeah. plan on that. Yeah. Cool. That sounds good to me. Yay. I'm not sure what our next knit along is going to be. I've just got to get through kidding time, season first. And then, uh, yeah. I have so much yeah. respect for people who keep animals. Like, I really do. I, I mean, it's, you really have to give your life over to it. There's a times of the year to well that's why i don't travel I, I don't travel like you do yeah. for that reason yeah yeah but i'll go on my backpacking trip i have a big trip planned at the end of may and mm-hmm. uh yeah and there's just a lot going on in the summer with you know we do a massive garden yeah like my garden is huge so but I know, yeah no. so there's the lots past. yeah you so people amazing. yeah and then you have to can it all when you're done you yeah know? but you know what I'm gonna have some help this year because you know my mom's moving out here this spring Your mom's there now yeah well not quite yet but she but will, will be, be in within the month and so I'm gonna have some help and even though you know she's she's getting around just fine uh and so that's gonna be a lot of fun to even just help sit at the kitchen table with your bowl of beans you know and right and visit and yeah snap beans i mean just having that extra pair of hands i mean don't get me wrong the girls are super good to help about that but just one more person makes it even better yeah so it's a lot but it's worth it because it's like real food you know yeah absolutely love it love it yeah. so we okay. wanted to get bees but i don't think that's going to happen this year because just of all the other things going on with yeah maybe next year yeah I wanted to have bees when we lived in Arizona and 
we had, we were on, I think a third of an acre, just like in suburbia. Yeah. And I was like, but it's still like, it'll go to our neighbor's yards and whatever. Yeah, and pollinate whatever. Yeah. Right. And my husband was like, yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> like people have small children. We were in a neighborhood full of small children on little lots. And I was like, he was like, we're going to get complaints. And I was like, he's probably right. We probably can't do that. And then like a year later is when we moved to the Philippines. So it wouldn't have worked out anyway. I would have had to rehome them, but yeah. Yeah. I that love something. Raw, real honey is the best. Well, I've gone off sugar entirely since then. So now I'm like, well, now there's no reason for me to have honey, to have bees. Except your once a year Christmas craze that you Right. Do. It would just be all honey. <laughs> <laughs> and crackling oat bran. A crackling oat bran with honey on top. No milk. Why would I need milk? I'd have honey. Just... Right? <laughs> One of my favorite things is homemade yogurt, Go, you know, homemade goat's milk yogurt, right. homemade granola, because that's the best, because then you can doctor it how you want. You know, you can yeah, put your cranberries that, yeah. and your almonds and all that stuff. You can put whatever you want in there. So homemade granola, homemade goat's milk yogurt. And then I get like uh, frozen blueberries and make my own parfait. And then I nice. drizzle just the tiniest bit of honey. And then it kind of turns really hard because the berries are frozen. Uh-huh. So it's almost like the magic shell. Andy. Yeah. <laughs> like you dipped your parfait. <laughs> I just love that. Yeah. Excellent. We always have to talk about food and weather, apparently. Yeah. The snow is coming down even harder now. I think. They lied. They lied to you. Totally lied. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to go anywhere, do you? I don't have to go anywhere and my husband gets back tomorrow and it's going to be in the fifties. So oh, I'm not even going to bother shoveling at this point. I'm like, whatever, oh, it'll melt know. tomorrow. And anything that doesn't melt, he can shovel. I'm we have a foot of snow. I'm not shoveling. It's annoying. I just yeah. stomp through it. And you know, if I put on my big boots and my swishy pants, you know, like my snow pants and just go, shh, 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 shh. And you kind of make a path and then the dog can uh-huh. follow me because right. right now the snow is bigger than his belly or he goes ahead and bounds ahead and breaks. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just can't, there's too many other things for me to be doing right now in the barn and worrying about shoveling paths. I don't care. Yeah. yeah and then once I finally get the truck out, I can walk in the tire tracks. So I don't care. Perfect. I do not care. But you know, we don't live in like a neighborhood where anybody would complain. Yeah. And well, I'm I don't not- know that anyone would complain. It's just like our vehicles are not made for that driving on the snow. Like it wouldn't work out well for us. So and you know, sometimes I think, well, maybe I need to go like shovel out where the male person comes. Uh-huh. And then I looked around, I'm like, well. The whole road hasn't been plowed. There's no mail today. They're not even gonna make it. Like I don't <laughs> that'd be a waste of my time, wouldn't it? Yeah. And they have a four-wheel drive Jeep thing. So whatever. <laughs> okay, so people can go watch Instagram for baby goat pictures and people need to follow you so they can find out about your yarn hog, box. Hog mini, hog what? Hog mini. Hog mini <laughs> yarn box. How how do you spell that? Hog man a y hog manny hog manny <laughs> okay so As, it'll be a 31 day december 1st to december 31st box and so what does that word mean uh it's just there it's just new year's eve so is it scottish is it yeah it's a scottish tradition thing yeah but is the word scottish for I assume so. I don't know if it's like a direct translation. I don't think so. It's I'm going to Google that. Yeah. So it's just the, it's just the name for the last day of the old year. Okay. That's just the name of that day. It's Hogman. Interesting. Yeah. So So they have their own traditions for it as far, like there's a lot more visiting that happens and like feeding people and stuff like that. So it's, and drinking, you know, it's, New well, Year's Scotland. Yeah. <laughs> drinking <laughs> so anyway yeah so that that'll be yep that'll May. be a lot of fun i haven't even honestly i mean i know it's march i need to start thinking ahead i haven't even thought about advent for nick for this coming season yeah because it's springtime on the farm 
Well, right. really, it's late winter. We don't call it spring till the snow is gone. <laughs> spring is like May. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was thought well, about Advent. all these people yeah. doing Advent boxes in the past. Yeah. They, you know, and the pre orders often start like in May, May and they June. do. And I need to. And start- I was always like, why? Why is this? And now I now I know because now yeah. I have like my lists of preparation that I need to get through in order to make it work. And I'm like, oh, I. Yeah. I get it now. They really do need yeah. to start that early. And the independent dyers, like they need to know how much supplies to order and then how many minis they need. And yeah, it's a lot. And the packaging, yep. you have to get your packaging arranged and sent to you in time yep. and all kinds of And all the little pre- gifty, like, yep. yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. And in this case, it's a lot of people. It's a lot of people. And all we have to do, well, not yeah. you, because now you're in the middle of it. But right. all I have to do, all I have to do is like, have fun and chat about it. Right, right. And then yeah. edit video. <laughs> <laughs> As always, it's delightful to visit. Always, Jana. Yeah. You know, I love these times. Me too. All right. Take care. We'll see okay, you. Bye, everybody. Bye.